Hey, what's going on? I want to talk about this one. Because a lot of people, a lot of black people keep talking about being an entertainer. And counting the money that entertainers make as if that's a measure of success. But it should be more clear than ever that all entertainers are under control. The Iron Pyramid stuff. I've seen, I was going through, matter of fact, I should have made a video of them. I was going through my little CD collection because I'm selling all those. And I know the first thing a lot of people are going to say, you ain't getting nothing for those, but you be shocked. You can get $100 per CD, depending on it, if it's out of print, like I've been getting already. I'm telling you, I, for what I paid per CD new, I am getting no less than that per CD. But I was looking at some of these CDs and before I even knew about some Illuminati type shit, I never gave like rap rappers any thought on that uh, type of thing. Especially some rappers. And you know, people like Bun B, they always said all of them are under that control. And now I'm really seeing it. I knew a whole, most of them were, but... You keep seeing the one eye symbolism on albums. And then I, I was thinking about that Run DMC raising hell. You know, I was thinking, you know, back then you think, okay, well, maybe they're talking about their rappers and they're here to raise some hell in the rap game with their music. But now when you think about it, <laughs> I guess Raising Hell was a part of that uh, satanic shit. Just like that DMX with that is dark and hot as hell, whatever the hell that album, the second album was called. And then you see the one eye symbolism in a whole lot of these rappers' uh, album covers, and then the names of the albums, the inner mind's eye, all that kind of shit. And I said, damn, this shit was here all along. But only certain people knew about that shit. Tupac, All Eyes on Me. See, some of those album names are slick. That's not really, and I got my new water too, by the way. <laughs> a lot of people aren't thinking about these names, which a lot of people weren't. And all the rappers out now, <clears throat> the ones with the name, you know, the ones that you see on TV, award shows, those are the ones that are <clears throat> under the spell, so to speak. And they get their money. A lot of it is superficial of a, a facade. All these fucking billionaires. I mean, it's harder to become a billionaire in the rap game than it was in the 90s and 2000s. When people can go multi-platinum. With, with the blink of an eye, now people are selling, if they're lucky, selling 5000 a week. That ain't generating no money to go become a billionaire. I don't give a fuck about a clothing line. Whose clothing line is popping? I know some people are going to say Rihanna. Is it really? Or do they just make it that way? Now, the main point I'm trying to make. And this is what you got to think about. And I made videos about this in the past. If you take away, and, and, and part of this is when I look at singers from the 50s and 60s and shit, 70s. Was we talking about Sam Cooke and all that kind of stuff? James Brown. You think about it. You take away sports money. 
entertainment money, which includes everything else that you see black people visibly in. A lot of people are stunting, living above their means. Because when you see people on TV shows might get 10,000 a week, 20,000 a week or an episode. You do the math on that. That's not a lot of money. That's enough money for you to stunt in Hollywood. But you got to take out, you got to take shit out on credit. That's why you see people getting homes foreclosed, cars repo. Because we need to get into entertainment to make a few hundred thousand a year in general. White people and Asians, they'll make that regularly. That's why you go to a fast food restaurant, go any business that you deal with. I don't know if you notice what I noticed, but it's the same routine. Black people, if they got black Americans there, they're working the entry level jobs. And there's always an Asian, even a Hispanic and definitely a white overseer, also known as a supervisor. And then management. And they plug in any kind of foreigner from any other country to be over us. And then they get slick and then they'll have the black immigrant <clears throat> to make it seem like, oh, yeah, they they are hiring blacks. No, they're not hiring blacks. They're making sure that you are kept in your position and people don't believe that this shit is fucking calculated. Then why do you see gays everywhere? Why do you see the same type of agendas that they keep pushing? Because it's all calcul calculated. I'm going to do something on uh, the larger TV. You keep seeing these. Uh, every time you watch TV, Hispanics, they be fucking weird. And they make them unlike the kind you see in your everyday life. This is what I call Hollywood Hispanics. Just like they got Hollywood Arabs. They got Hollywood Hispanics. Unrealistic shit. They don't make up the majority. It's fraud. Oh yeah, in the last video too, I, I was supposed to mention something too, but I didn't mention it. Because I was looking up Christopher Donner. I, I was like, damn, I didn't know he died. And then, <clears throat> so I looked him up. Then I said, oh my God, him too. Another small hat in disguise. It's not even his goddamn name. I said, my God. I said, does it ever end? Apparently, it doesn't. I said, damn. They changed their fucking names to keep on deceiving the white people. But, again, they're the ones in charge of entertainment. That's why I refer people to that irritated genie, the creation of the entertainment business. That, I think that was his finest work. And unfortunately, my man... Is all but disappeared, unfortunately, but, you know, I thought my man put out some good stuff. You know, I try to invite the man on. Hell, I try to invite a lot of people on, but they don't come on. Hell, I even try inviting that old Marsha Baz on to talk. They seem to ignore my emails. I don't know what it is. Uh, maybe I'm getting to them at the wrong email. Maybe I need to get to them. On their channels. I don't know. But they ignore me. It's another reason why I was like man. F Never mind. I ain't even going to get into that. <laughs> but um. You think about this. I, I, I said this a million times. You see how new leagues. And sporting events come out. From the rich small hats. Bare knuckle fighting. They got. A million and one different types of MMAs. Two football leagues now outside of the NFL and I haven't been able to catch that USFL yet 
They should have updated the logo. I don't know why they cut that archaic logo. And uh, I don't know if the XFL started up again. But when they make these leagues, they want black people because we make shit exciting. And if we weren't the best in sports, they wouldn't want us in sports at all. So when you hear about Jackie Robinson and all these people integrating sports, it's not because they wanted black people. It's because we were the best at whatever the fuck is out there. That's what it is. If we weren't the best and if we didn't create all fucking musics, we wouldn't be offered those jobs because they shut us out of fucking regular jobs in society. That's why every time you watch a commercial, what do you keep seeing all the fucking time? Black people eating chicken, black people dancing, black people doing sports, black people rapping. The same images. And if you watch old commercials on YouTube... From the 50, well, shit, I was going to say from the 50s, <laughs> 60s and 70s, but shit, when it's from the 50s and 60s, you hardly, I don't, you don't, I don't think you see any black people in, in those commercials, so you can't watch it from back then, but definitely in the 70s, late 60s going into the 70s and 80s, you see the same images. And that's all calculated. They didn't want us on TV advertising shit. Until the black power movements. And again. Even the ones with the entertainment money. When they try to move into certain neighborhoods. They got met up with white terrorism. Or white flight. Think about it. If there were no entertainment outlet, which includes sports, because you see, I, I've been telling people in the NBA, they've been desperately trying. See, it's weird. It's a weird thing. Black people made the NBA successful. Note that it was fairly successful when it was mostly white. <clears throat> From the beginning up until, so I guess, the 80s. They say Magic Johnson is the one responsible for, uh, you know, making it a success and making sure that it's, it hung around. In the 80s, you still had a lot of white players, but blacks were taking over. And, of course, white people were cognizant of this. They all They always had race on the mind, no matter what they say what they don't say or what they tell you. Don't think for a minute that they didn't think that, damn, this is mostly black people. Just like in the hockey, they know when there's a few black people in there, they know they're like, oh man, there's a few black guys playing. This is a white man's sport, even though it was made by black people. <laughs> They know what the hell is going on. In the 90s, it was almost all black. Then in the late 90s, 2000s, that's when they started throwing these uh, Europeans in. And they keep trying to put them in. And now they're trying to throw these Africans in. Black Americans don't realize when they do this, they're doing it for two primary reasons. And one third. Reason, which is the excuse, which is the, and that excuse is to globalize the sport. Why would you have to globalize local sports? The NBA is local. Boston Celtics, Golden State Warriors, San Antonio Spurs. Those are American cities representing cities in American states. Then you got that goddamn Canadian team. That they need to get rid of. So what do you need to globalize that for? Every country should have their own goddamn sports. Just like Canada. Get your own. 
Globalization is another way of having a superficial global empire and trying to make it appear as if they love everyone. They don't love everyone. If everybody were equal or they were trying to make everybody equal, they would equalize that goddamn money. But that's never going to happen. They want to dilute the black Americans because when it comes to basketball, we're the best. Even when Larry Bird was out, he wasn't the best. He was one of the best, but he wasn't the best. LeBron James, after you see the, the failure of the Brooklyn Nets and James Harden, that leaves no doubt that LeBron James is a bad man and the baddest. He's the king. There ain't no doubt about that now because now they see how hard it is to do what the hell he did, even though he lost most of his finals appearances. But just to get there, you see, you see how difficult that is. <clears throat> and he was able to do that. Fuck it. Eight straight times. Spilled the water. Eight, eight straight times. <clears throat> so they want to dilute us. Now they want to hype up the Luka Doncic, which he, he ain't bad. But and that Joker. They said statistically he, he should have won the MVP. But people always just say that the man is boring. See now that's the other question. You take us out the, the picture. Sports are boring. Because these other people just play like the San Antonio Spurs. Fundamentals. We come in. We hype the shit up. The dunks. The uh, showboating. The taunting, all that kind of shit. These other people, they don't do that. That's not how they operate. That's why you see that Toronto team full of fucking uh, foreigners, just like that San Antonio. That's why they hype San Antonio up when they were on top, because it was filled with foreigners to globalize the sport and to dilute black America, which also is diluting paychecks. Every time they get a foreigner, they're taking away a high-class paycheck from a black American. And when I say foreigners, I'm not just talking about foreign blacks. I'm talking about foreign whites, too. And speaking of that, they'll throw some white guy on a team, especially a white American on a team, just because they feel that they have to. So that's how they hook them up. Because they're like, God damn, we got to have some kind of white American, and he got to get some kind of run. I was just watching this Milwaukee Bucks in Boston game. I noticed how the coach kept on playing uh, a couple of white dudes who they didn't need to play. But yet they could have been playing the black guy that was sitting on the bench. I forgot that dude from Milwaukee with the beard. He was a point guard. And I don't know why he kept on sitting Brooke Lopez down. I thought the man must have been hurt or something. So, you know, that was on Milwaukee. But as far as <clears throat> what's left, Milwaukee, I mean, Boston and Miami, that's going to be an interesting series because they're kind of similar. And as far as the Western teams go, <sighs> Dallas was the weakest of the teams. And as I'm making this right now, the game didn't come on. And it's 7-17 on this right now. I think Dallas is the weakest of the teams left. I'd be shocked if they beat Phoenix, but I don't think Phoenix or Golden State can handle Boston or Miami. And the funny part is all those teams are actually kind of similar to each other. But I just think Miami and Boston are stronger. And I don't want to see Boston win, even though I think that they're capable of doing it. Only because people like me are going to start screaming out conspiracy because the Lakers just won and tied the Celtics with titles. And now all of a sudden, everybody thought that the Lakers are going to come back and win a title. Now the Celtics come back and win a title and go back one up on the Lakers. And you know my conspiracy theory on that. 
the basketball is supposed to have gotten started in Springfield, Massachusetts. The Hall of Fame is there. For years, I never put the two and two together on that. Oh, and it just so happens that Massachusetts basketball team, the Boston Celtics, had the most titles. Even though the Lakers were more successful and went to more NBA finals than the Celtics did. <laughs> That's the funny part about it. And the funny other funny part is the Patriots, before, before Tom Brady's Patriots, the Dallas Cowboys have been the most successful team because they went to the most Super Bowls, even though they didn't win the most, but they went to the most. And up to now, now the Patriots are the most successful team because they went to the most Super Bowls. And this shocks a lot of people, but the Denver Broncos are the second most successful team, having gone to the second most Super Bowls, but they only won three, though. I think they went to nine or something like that, and they only won three. So that's a bad record. Just like the Yankees went to the most uh, World Series and won the most. And a lot of people don't know that the St. Louis Cardinals... They're the, the one who went to the second most and won the second most titles. But by a long shot, I think they won 10 or something like that. 10 or 12 or some shit like that. So it's crazy. But just like hockey, like I always tell people, the sports with the most black Americans are the most successful sports, football and basketball. The less black people you have, the less successful the sport is. You got baseball. I mean, you watch a baseball game on any given day. The stadium is half filled, but they play a whole lot of games. Baseball is boring. I'm, I used to love it. Used to play it. I was bored when I was playing it because either if you're not doing nothing, it's like, God damn, shit is boring like a motherfucker even when you're actually playing the shit. And I played in college, but I didn't pursue it because I didn't think anybody was watching. I didn't think they had any scouts in my college, so I didn't even know about that. The coach didn't even tell me, oh, you can have somebody from the MLB watching. If I would have known that, I would have stuck with the shit. <laughs> um, but I know with baseball, unlike other sports, though, it takes you a lot longer to get in the majors. They'll keep you in the minors for a while. Which I always find weird because it's not exactly the most challenging sport. You know? But baseball, you got all the black guys in it, but they're like Hispanic. And you see some of them try to come with our kind of swag and style. But it's not the same because of those names and the accents. Then, like I said, you got hockey. Probably not even 1% of black people play hockey. And that's why it keeps switching from network to network. You know, it's almost like it's getting lost. A sport that's lost. I would watch it. I, I, I suggested this many times. I said if they tripled the size of the net, I would watch hockey. I don't want to watch a sport... Where the final score is one to zero. It's boring. That's why people like football. They'll watch a football game. Even if a football game. Is three to nine. Or zero to nine. Because it's still exciting. When they do what they do. Or when they stop somebody on defense. But again. The most more black people you have. The more exciting. The more successful the sport. Now, the WNBA, since they got an agenda, and that's the lesbian agenda, and that's the girl power agenda, they're trying to keep that afloat as much as possible. ESPN has been trying to uh, 
promote it more like it's something that people want to see and all that kind of shit. People don't want to see that shit. But they try to promote it that way. But people aren't watching. Last one I got a glimpse of was Liberty against Connecticut. I noticed that the stadium was kind of darkened so you won't see the empty seats. <laughs> you you know it. If you if you can't fill a stadium, you shouldn't be on national TV. That's the, that's the bottom line. But they keep trying. I used to support it because I felt that females coming out of college, they play basketball in college. Why couldn't they make a living playing it? You know, once they graduate. But people don't want to see it. Well, a lot of people are harder on it than I am. They say even Shaquille O'Neal and a few other uh, NBA guys, they suggested that you lower the rim so that they can dunk. I mean, I, I think that's a good idea because they did shrink the size of the ball for the women. So why, why not lower the rim? Duncan is what people like seeing and, and the NBA, you know, plus the problem is you got at least 65% of the WNBA are, are carpet munchers. <laughs> so, I mean, that's not exciting. Then you got that Candy, what was her name? Candace uh, Owens, I think her name is, you know, nice looking female. They've been promoting. Then she comes out. Being a uh, crunch and munch uh, type of female. Candace Parker. So, and they give her, you notice once that happens, then they start giving her the commercials and shit. Promoting all these lesbians and all this gay shit. And I sent something on my Facebook about this guy that was in The Last American Virgin. Who knew that that guy was a funny man. Because he always played the tough guy or the ladies man. <laughs> and he was a small hat too. Another small hat. He was David Geffen's boyfriend. I said, man, this is some crazy shit. All these gay small hats out here. And you wonder why the shit is getting promoted. But go being a, a gay and a small hat, that's going against the goddamn religion. So it must not be about a religion. But the main topic, again. Which is, I mean, we're still on it, but you take away sports and entertainment, a few things happen. Number one, you won't see as many black people in the public eye. That's number one. Number two, you'll see even fewer. You see, entertainment shows you black people. That's why they show it all the time. Black people in a mansion. <clears throat> high level cars, all that kind of shit. Make you think, oh man, these guys are getting these black people. They ain't poor. But what they never remind you of is that the neighborhoods that these entertainers move into are filled with white and Asian non entertainers who can afford to live in these neighborhoods. And they don't have to be an entertainer to get that kind of money. That's what they don't. They don't tell you and they don't show you that. Because that will discourage you from wanting to become an entertainer. I said the music biz is already dead. Everything is a facade with the music biz. Because there is no way to sell a damn thing. Now me, I've been selling my CD collection, getting steady money per week. Cause I got a lot of CDs, but at the end of the day, like when I move and I got to haul 200 pounds of CDs and shit, now, I don't have to keep them in the same thing, but I just do. I said, this is some dead rate. Wait, I got to get, get rid of this shit. <clears throat> you know, a lot of the shits are out of print. So collectors buy that shit. They'll pay. They'll pay. Especially those rap CDs, they'll pay. You'd be surprised. Some that's why I got jerked on one. I didn't really get jerked. I just didn't do the research on one of them. Kooji Rap Road to the Riches. Apparently, that one is out of print, going for an average of two fifty. I'm talking two hundred and fifty dollars. 
I didn't sell it for that much, but my main goal was to get rid of them. And I didn't want to hold it out for hundreds of dollars on, on a CD because even I know even myself, I'm not paying a certain amount of money. But, um, you know, it is what it is. People want to collect it from around the world. They want these rap CDs. And people who've been buying the CDs have been largely non-black. You could tell by the names. They've been white and Hispanics from California, which is even more shocking. But people want the rap that they never had the opportunity to check out. They want to collect it. Again, another one of our creations. You know? See, now it's starting to feel like summertime out here now. I think it's 76. Um, but the music biz is dead. That's why they still keep up. That's why you see Alicia Keys doing the, I think it's whatever the insurance commercial is. Uh, people doing movies, people on TV shows. That's why they're on TV all the time. Because that's really the only way they can get paid is to do the Hollywood thing. In the 80s, it was hard for a rapper to be seen. It was rare for them to be seen on national TV. Very rare. Now they're everywhere and they don't even have a fucking hit. <laughs> because the music business is dead. And if somebody out there can correct me, and educate me on it because you put an album out nothing is being sold because nobody is buying new CDs number one you don't have to for the most part two the music that they put out is so horrible that it's not worth buying in the first place <laughs> I mean <laughs> you know <clears throat> it's just crazy now, I obtained, you know, a few new shit here and there, but. And I say out of the, let's say if I got 20 albums. Because people put the shit together so fast and in a lazy manner that you could tell that they, they're not expecting much out of it. You know? That's why people listen to the music of the past, because it's like, okay, they put in a lot of work. And then musical masterpieces. And unless you get back to it, they cut out the R&B. The industry did. Because they want to take another outlet from black people. Where we dominate. I mean, it is our lane. And nobody else can get in. Because they can't match our vocals. And creativity. I've been trying to tell people this for years. They took the... R&B out because the R&B we were still making even though people were sampling it we were still making music playing the music the instruments they took away that influence because when you see people playing instruments on TV just like when you see white people they like seeing the rockers play the instruments they don't even have them playing too many instruments anymore or at least showing them because they sample too then People would look at that and be influenced by that. And say, I want to do that. Then they want to take that up and continue on. That's how the music was so good for decades. Now people don't want to do that because they're not seeing it. They're just thinking, oh, let me just get me a laptop and, and let that be the end of it. Now, the R&B, there's no spot, no focus on that. And it's not as if people don't want R&B. It's just that the people who run the show, the small hats, don't want to focus on R&B because technically anybody can rap. That doesn't mean that anybody can rap great, <laughs> but anybody can rap, but not anybody can sing. So that's the difference. That's why you look, listen to R&B in the 50s and 60s. Shit. Up to the 90s. If not 2000s. Most of the singers were powerful singers that couldn't be duplicated except by another black person. Black American, that is. A few Caribbeans, uh, you know, they did I even though trying to impersonate us, of course. But it's our thing. So they sabotage that. When did, how did that sabotage take place? 
Number one, once Viacom bought BET, they dropped Video Soul. That's number one. Video Soul was always the fallback support for R&B. You can guarantee that if you had, I, I think Donnie Simpson, I don't know if it's still in effect, I think on his channel or some other channel, you got a Video Soul comeback type of thing. But that was always the support for an R&B artist to get your video in rotation somewhere. Because if it wasn't on Video Soul or the softer stuff when they had the Midnight Love, the truth is it wasn't really getting no run. You had MTV Jams. They wouldn't always play the hardest R&B. You know, it was always some... I mean, they would play some good stuff and then it would be... Stuff that had to cross over. But it's straight up R&B artists. They wouldn't really play that. And that's where those people would get their lane. And people were still able to go gold without going pop. Some platinum without going pop. So they could sustain a career. That's why you don't hear a lot of the, uh, uh, singers like that. That keep it real and, and play the instruments. Because you don't have the video soul. Even the urban radio stations. <clears throat> they either change format to the hip hop. Or they got bought up like 98.7 Kiss. New York. ESPN. Sports. On a classic station like that. A station known for hip hop history. Then you got WBLS. See in in the 2000s, early 2000s you had uh Hot 97, then the Power 105 came along and they were playing what they call hip hop in R&B. Which is mostly hip hop oriented type of stuff with some type of singer or makeshift would be singer. Not any powerful singing, you know, the Chris Browns and shit like that. Trey songs, you know, half ass singers. <laughs> What's the other dude? Lloyd. And if they didn't make it rap, hip hop oriented, it was hard for them to get a hit. And they kind of helped. Messed that whole shit up by doing that kind of thing. <laughs> and then the R. Kelly, of course, he was able to keep doing his thing. But you already know how that shit got played out, which is still a weird situation. I think he, you know, it's all a part of that eye and pyramid shit. Nothing but games. Secret religion. Um, yeah, BLS. Still plays R&B, but they mainly play classic R&B because the new shit, it's not quite the same. And you got to bring back people who play instruments. I mean, if you go on YouTube, watch some Ohio players and you see that band and LTD and all these people with the band and shit, horn section, drums, guitar, bass. Singer, all that kind of shit. I don't think you're going to see that kind of shit again. But see, they made the music. You need all that. So they kind of took that shit out. When all those people die. Then what? Then what are you going to do? Because little kids are getting influenced by what they're hearing now. As those little kids become adults and have children, those children will hear what their parents are listening to, which will probably be even worse rap. And that's all they'll be influenced by. I've seen teenagers, cousins, and other people, their idea of getting into the music biz is rapping and making beats on a laptop. 
I haven't seen anybody talk about drums, guitars, or nothing. Only time I seen motherfuckers play an instrument, <clears throat> I went into a guitar center store. And they had some type of drumming competition. That's the only time I, I'm like, damn, I, I can't recall seeing any instrument. I'm, I'm surprised you got stores like a guitar center. What's the other one? Sam Ash. I'm surprised you got that kind of shit still around. Selling instruments because I'm like, who the fuck <laughs> are playing the instruments besides churches and live uh, shit like that? Shit. I was thinking about getting me a cheap ass bass guitar just to, you know, see what I could do. I was thinking really cheap. But the R and B is gone. That's why I say with when if the entertainment biz, see, we we always had our own entertainment. Club outside, backyard, or something like that. <clears throat> Going back a hundred years or so. Before records. But see, once they got the records and the recording contracts, now they control the situation. And it's the small hats. But now they control almost all media. So they've been able to eliminate the R&B and emphasize the hip hop. <clears throat> and they tell you the hip hop is the best selling genre. Well, they don't tell you what the hell the other genres are selling because they ain't selling nothing. I once read an article about Billboard magazine and they said that they keep artists like the Beatles, Rolling Stones, and whoever else in history who keep selling a ton of albums because they outshine what the new artists are selling. So they keep them off the charts. They could put them on the charts if they were being fair and equal. But they took them off the charts because they didn't want them, their chart positions to interfere with everybody else. That's new. Now this heat is coming in. <laughs> so that's why they do that. So if they had the entertainment biz, if they got rid of entertainment, you would see practically no black people around and even less with any kind of money. And a lot of the black people who are entertainers who get money don't know what the fuck to do with it. And that's another topic as far as the drug use and just being a fucking dimwit is concerned. Not to mention others trying to influence people what to do to uh, spin. And getting beat by record labels. All that kind of shit. But this is what's happening. People keep looking at entertainers. And again, a lot of these people, YouTubers or whoever that keep talking about who, who did what in entertainment like the uh, young thug and his situation. If you notice when people like young thug get played the fuck out. Notice how something else happens to get them back in the news. Because it's all planned. That's why. It's all planned. It's all set up to make them look like they're... Uh, actually what he what he's supposed to be about and people talk about it me that's why i don't give a damn because you know after a while you realize it is what the bun bees and others have been saying for years and you should know it anyway because it's called show business it's a show it's fake lights camera action even the money that they get is fake And it's the damn shame. That's the way it is. That's what they signed up for. Now, back in the days when music was great, you cared more. Now that music is horrible, I can give a damn about any of these people, to be honest with you. But the athletes are becoming fewer and fewer 
the black Americans because they are trying to replace us with foreigners. And they will tell you it's because of globalism. They want to expand the brand. Okay, well, you can expand it further than Michael Jordan or LeBron James, what they were able to do. You notice how the greatest basketball players are always black Americans. The top man in the league. They try to say it's that joker now. If he was that good, we'd still be seeing the Denver Nuggets in, in the playoffs. And we'd be paying attention to him. We, we'd notice if the man was good. So I see that Luca, he is good. I'm starting to see his game become a little limited now. But he's legit. But again, he's a foreigner. These Africans, the only ones that's good, like I said, is Giannis. And you see when the Celtics put up that wall, even though he was still scoring points, he's not as effective. Bam out of bio, he's a hard worker. He's pretty good. He's not a, just not a center, a real center. And that's the only thing that's going to save the rest of these teams is because they don't have a real center. And if Phoenix survives, Phoenix might have the edge because they got two true centers. But the way these coaches have been coaching, for, for some stupid reason, they, when somebody else plays small, they want to play small. You don't coach like that. That's stupidity. You got to go by the flow, by how, who is playing and how they're playing and what who can shut who down. That's what you got to go by. I don't want to get into that. But with that being said, if we didn't have sports and entertainment, we'd be even more broke. You think about this, uh, a Negro like Tariq Nasheed. Yeah, I'm bringing him up. And the new black media, I'm bringing them up. If there was no sports and entertainment for them, where would even people like them be at? Nowhere. They're not giving us jobs or the jobs that we should have. They're giving it to foreigners, important foreigners. And that white cracker who supposedly shot the people in Buffalo was complaining about foreigners, but for some odd reason, he wanted to go kill some black people. And when, and it's funny how I mentioned in another video about driving three hours away. And it's funny, right? Because now that should give you an idea. You got time. When you're driving three hours away, you got enough time to think about what the fuck you're doing. Did he drive with the helmet on and the armor on all, all that time? And nobody noticed and said, hey, let me pull this guy over. Something ain't right. And I always said, if black people got, white people got a problem with black people, just go to where the black people are and, and, and see what you can do. That doesn't make any goddamn sense. But it's stunts, it's shenanigans, it's a secret religion. Sports and entertainment, they can drop at any time. See that uh, C-19 year gives you an idea of how things can be if they want to drop it. Because that's what the hell happened. The sports and entertainment was dropped. Or handicapped. In 2020. They can stop it, put it on pause, reset it again when they feel like it. And they can stop black people. Like I said, if we weren't the best, we wouldn't be in it. We wouldn't even have a fucking chance. Because they don't put us, they don't let us get into nothing else. And I'm going to close with this. Tech jobs, management, upper management jobs. Anything to run a business 
or to design and manufacture things, they're cutting us out largely. You got to be the best of the best or some black person who was raised around white people and so well spoken that white people don't feel threatened or they need a token Negro, which they usually try to get a foreigner or an East Indian <laughs> or an Asian. But the bottom line is if they, they shut us out of these jobs, people keep talking about trying to build nations. These are vital skills to build nations. They keep us out on purpose because they didn't want us to build shit after slavery. To begin with. But black people can't accept it. Rather smoke weed, do coke, drink henny. What can we do? And rob people. Rob black people, by the way. You want to rob white people, please, I mean, do it. I mean, they're the ones with the money any goddamn way. Whites and Asians and Mexicans, they're the ones with the money, especially those Mexicans walking around with a pocket full of money. I ain't trying to say that to get people to start robbing them. I'm just saying, that's that's real. I told you when I used to be in, in sales and shit, they used to come in whip out the money because of the way that they came into this country, especially on the East Coast. You know, they can't go around carrying cards and shit. Even though now a lot of them are and they're getting a lot of jobs too. <clears throat> Even if they're small, the point is those are jobs that could have been yours. That's why I don't give a fuck about a foreigner. Because they're taking your job. They're taking your housing. They're taking your welfare. They're taking your lottery ticket winnings. They're taking food out of your goddamn mouth. They're taking your apartment, your house, your car, your clothes. And you don't care because you've been trained to love them and respect them just like these goddamn cocksuckers. None of you want to disrespect them because you've been brainwashed and trained that you better love them and respect them. Because of the powers that be said so. You don't have to love them. You don't have to respect none of them. But if you're in a high level job, you can't say nothing because you're going to get fired. That's how they blackmail you. Just downloaded another movie I just came across. I was looking on eBay. I was trying to find me some rare documentaries. So I can try to digitize. This is going to be on film. Like eight millimeter films from the sixties or some shit. Mainly from Kennedy. I was gonna try to I did find one though, but it ain't worth buying a uh digital film projector thing, scanner thing. It's not worth buying that. Just for that. But if I find some more, because my feeling is if it's out of print and some shit that nobody will ever want released again. Buy the shit on film and, you know, turn that into HD scan and do it that way. And you know, I'm going to do something to get some money out of it, too, but <laughs> do it that way. So I did find one JFK, but these people are selling these things for a decent amount of money to the point where I'm like, man, I don't know if the investment is worthwhile, but I don't know if I really want to stock up some archaic uh, film because I never had any film, but. I don't know if I want to do that, but I did see while I was looking, I saw a lot of interesting things that they had on film, which made me think before the VCR, I guess they must have had films that they could actually buy and watch. And I guess one of them was, uh, I saw, was the one with the JFK. They had commercials, cartoons, something called, I even saw one cartoon called Cold Black and the Seven Dwarfs. And they said it was a band, long band, racist cartoon. Take a black version of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. I think that was by whoever made the Looney Tunes. You know, they made a lot of racist shit. It was funny when you read about that on Wikipedia. You see how they try to rationalize it, try to say it's a 
satirical thing and all that kind of shit. Instead of what the fuck it was, it was just fucking racist. Made by small hats, of course. I saw that Beatles Hard Days Night movie. I'm like, damn, they must have had shit like that in the 60s. Fucking movies for sale that you could buy and watch at home. So maybe there was a time where they, they were never lacking from being able to see movies at home. But from what I was able to read, I didn't really find a great website on it to research the shit further. But it seemed as if buying a movie back then on actual film was pretty costly. So they, they said most people used it for a home movie recording instead of... Uh, watching movies but i'm sure some people did watch actual movies because that hard day's night i wonder i i like to see the quality on that then something called the boys in the band apparently that's some gay movie not gay porn but something about some gays or something like that so i said let me see what this shit is about came out in 1970 or 69 or something like that or 67 or something like that i said i had heard about it heard about that movie but I never knew what the fuck it was about. <laughs> because it was boys in the band. I was thinking, you know, boys in a band. You know? I'm going to see what that shit is about. I skimmed through the shit. It seemed like uh, <clears throat> some wild, uh, you know, back then they used to exaggerate a little bit on the gay uh, accents. But far as I could tell, they had given it some award. You know, when they do gay shit, they always try to act like it's some great thing. Bravery and shit. But, but you never hear that about no gay porn or nothing like that. You know? They don't want to show you no gay porn. Show you some shit like that. That'll, that'll make change your mind real quick. <laughs> but, um, there's another movie I downloaded called She... What was it called? The... The Last of Sheila. That's what it was called. James Coburn. From what I could tell, he, his wife was missing. Then he brings people on a cruise ship to try to figure out what happened. All that kind of, it seems interesting. You know, those 70s movies are interesting. Then something called The Animals or The Animal Kingdoms or some shit like that. I think you can watch that free on uh, Amazon or IMDb. I'm going to check that shit out. I never heard of this shit from the 70s. It was just, it's crazy. The trailer shows a dog trying to get a guy, and then he goes into a car, a car full of snakes. I'm like, man, well, this is some wild shit. So uh, I never heard of this shit, but I'm, uh, this seems like something to check out. <laughs> so with that, now 756, so that NBA game, Dallas Phoenix is about to come on. About to see what that's all about. And hopefully these videos will go up while all that's happening. Because you know how I can get. <laughs> so with that being said, I'm out.